coordination chemistry is all about nomenclature or naming compounds. And really that's all you need to know for coordination chemistry. Uh, but first things first, what is a coordination compound? Basically, it's a compound in which you have these neutral molecules or anions. They can be either or. And they're attached to a central atom via a unique set of bonds called coordinate covalent bonds. Uh, now, there are some terms you need to know. So the first is ligand, right? And so these neutral molecules or ion ions are called ligands or ligands, right? And they're attached to the central atom, which is always going to be a transition metal. So I'm going to call it TM for short. The bonds that connect them are called coordinate covalent bonds, which are different from regular covalent bonds. Regular covalent bonds have each of the two atoms contributing an electron to the bond, whereas a, in a coordinate covalent bond, it's the ligand that supplies the electron. So ligand supplies both electrons to create the bond. So an example of a coordination compound is shown here. And so the central element here is cobalt. It's a transition metal. So this is your TM, your central atom. And then all these guys around it are your ligands. And so here there are a total of six ligands, so it creates this sort of octahedral shape. And the, over the overall charge of the coordination compound is plus three. All right, so like uh, that VSEPR theory, uh, I would have to say that there's a lot of memorization for coordination chemistry. And I think the best way to do this is flashcards. So on the left hand side here, you see the formula and on the right, you see the name. This is something you have to memorize. You won't be given this on an exam. Uh, notice that some of these ligands are neutral. So these first guys are neutral. And then when you hit some of these halogens, they have a minus one charge. And then all these guys, a lot of them are polyatomic ions. They have negative charges of either minus one or minus two. Uh, I would say that the easiest way to learn coordination chemistry is just to practice and do problems. At first, you should have these tables in front of you. I would say after a while, you should try to do these problems without the tables. All right, so let's go from uh, chemical formula to name, which I think is actually a bit easier than the reverse. So we're going to start with a formula, and we're going to give it its name. So we're going to start with nickel, and we have the CN for them, and the overall charge is 2 minus. So the easiest way to go about this is to start with what's in uh, the brackets here in some of these. This first example, there's only one guy in the brackets. Here in part C, we have something in brackets as well as something outside of brackets. Start with what's in the brackets. What's in brackets represents the coordination compound. So this is your coordination compound. And you can probably already guess which one is going to be the ligand and which one is going to be the metal. Right? The metal is the nickel. Uh, when we name coordination compounds, we start with the ligand. So this CN is called a cyano group. I have four of them, so I call that tetra cyano. And then I write my nickel, right? So because the overall charge of this is a minus two, it's an anion. And so whenever it's an anion, you write eight at the end. So instead of just writing nickel, I write tetra cyano nickel eight. I'm not done because I need to actually specify the charge of my nickel. And I can figure that out fairly easily. Because I know that cyano has a minus charge of 1, minus 1 charge. I have 4 of them, so the cyano is minus 4, four the 4 of them. And so in order to make this entire thing in brackets have a total charge of minus 2, my nickel needs to have a charge of plus 2. Right? Because a positive 2 minus 4 is a negative 2. And so I write in bracket in these parentheses Roman numeral 2. Right? And so I can do the same thing for B. So I start with the ligands, which are in these parentheses. And I always name in alphabetical order. Right? So the OH is a hydroxo group. The OH2, in other words, an H2O, is an aqua group. And I write that first. I have five of them. So I write penta aqua. And then I write hydroxo because H become, comes after A. So I write hydroxo next. I just have one of them. And then I go ahead and write nickel. So here, the overall charge is not a negative. Instead, it's a positive. And so what I'm going to write is nickel. I'm not going to need the 8. I'm just going to write nickel. I'm going to save room for the charge. 
and then ion. So whenever it's an overall positive charge, you just write ion at the end. And now we have to figure out what charge the nickel has, right? So hydroxo has a charge of minus one, right? This is something you, you get from the table. Water is neutral, aqua is neutral. And so in order to make this overall coordination compound have an, a charge of two plus, the nickel needs to have a charge of three plus. And so then I write nickel three ion, right? And then this last example, okay? So we start with what's in the parentheses, that's inside the brackets, that's the coordination compound. Uh, I name things in alphabetic order. So here I have a chloro group, I have an amine, and I have an aqua. Amine comes first, so I'm gonna write diamine, because I have two of them. I have uh, one aqua, so I write aqua. And then I write trichloro, because I have three of those guys and then chromium. And then now I have to figure out the charge of chromium, right? And so notice one thing here is that I have a chlorine after, right? Before I had actually charges and nothing attached. Here I have a chlorine, and the chlorine's gonna be an anion. Remember, it's one of the halogens. It has a minus one charge. Whenever it's an anion, I, instead of writing chlorine, I write chloride. What that tells me is that the overall charge of what's in the brackets has to be plus one. Because I know that the chlorine has an overall minus one charge and overall this thing is neutral, right? And so I can figure out if this is the uh, total charge of plus one, I can figure out the charge of chromium, right? Chlorine is minus three because each one is minus one and I have three of them. Amine is neutral and so is water. And so if my overall charge is plus one, what charge does chromium have to have? It has to have a charge of plus four. And so I write chromium four chloride. And here I don't need an ion, the, the word ion after chromium because I have the chloride, the chloride after that. So the second way that you'll be asked these types of questions is to be given the chemical name and write the formula, right? So I think this is a slightly more tricky, but it's the same logic, right? So we'll start with diamine, diaqua, dibromo, nickel, three ion. So I start by writing out my brackets. I know that my coordination compound is what I write first. Uh, the, the transition metal is what I write first, so I write nickel. And then I write my ligands in parentheses. And so the first one is amine. I have two of them. So amine is NH3. And I have two of them. I have two aquas. So that's H2O. And then I also have two bromines. So I'm going to write Br2. The last thing I have to figure out is what the overall charge of this coordination compound is. So I know that nickel is plus 3. I know that NH3, amine, is neutral. Uh, aqua is also neutral, but bromine is minus one, and I have two of them, so it's minus two, right? So three, positive three minus two is going to get me a positive one charge. And so that's the coordination compound as well as its charge, right? We can do the same thing for part B. So tris, oxalate, cobaltate, three. So we'll start with our brackets and our transition metal, which is cobalt. And then here, our only ligand is uh, oxalate which is, you can either write it as OX, or you can also write it as uh, C2O4. Again, something you should memorize. And I have three of them, tris. So here, it, 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 you would say tri, but because there's a value, you add that S. So tris oxalate. And I have three of them. And I know that the overall charge of C2O4 oxalate is minus two. I have three of them, so that's minus six. And then my cobalt has a charge of plus three because the Roman numeral is three. And so my overall charge of this guy is gonna be minus three. And that's why the eight is here because my overall charge is negative and it's a anion. Okay, so the last example, diamine, diaqua, ethylene, diamine, chromium, two bromide. So we're gonna start with our brackets as always. Our transition metal is chromium, so I'm gonna write chromium here. And then I'm gonna write in my ligands, right? So the first one is NH3, amine. I have two of them. I also have two waters, so I'm gonna write H2O. 
to. And then I have ethylene diamine, right? So you can actually just abbreviate ethylene diamine as EN. You don't have to write the entire structure that you saw in the table. Okay, so then I want to figure out the overall charge of this guy. So NH3 is neutral, H2O is also neutral, and actually uh, EN, ethylene diamine, is also neutral. My chromium has a plus 2 charge, and so the overall charge of this guy is going to be plus 2. It's attached to a bromine, but remember that each bromine only has a minus 1 charge. So in order to make this entire thing neutral, I need to have two bromines. And so my final answer is the following. Really, in your final answer, you don't need these guys, right? These numbers right here that I drew out. That's just to help you with your work. Your final answer, you, you would write this. The reason you have two bromines is to cancel out the 2 plus charge from the coordination columns.